What is going on guys? Dr. D here from OneHive Invicta bringing you a recent war recap between OneHive Invicta and Swarm Synergy. For those who don't know, Swarm Synergy is the feeder clan or part of the Swarm family of The Swarm, which is one of the top ranked clans in the game right now. Um, before I get into it, I uh, just want to give props to all of our six star warriors, uh, Josephus, Trumpy, Tony, Iggy, uh, Big D, PAB, or Scott, and Shubham, who I think is a, a swarm guy who came up to war with us uh, just for this war. Uh, but anyway, props to you guys. Uh, let's get in and have a look at the war statistics. So, here are the basic war statistics, 113 to 112. Really came down to the last attack. Um, we uh, eked this one out, fortunately. Um, let's have a look here quick at the enemy team. Swarm Synergy, you can see they're part of the, uh, the Swarm family clan. Um, this is their, their feeder. Uh, really, really um, great group of guys over there. This was a lot of fun. This was a great war. Um, so let's, let's hop into it and let's have a look. Uh, the difference really came down to um, uh, a few things. As usual, it's the number of uh, Town Hall 10s that wind up getting tripled. We had one more Town Hall 11 than they did, so we had a bit of an advantage. Uh, they had um, two more Town Hall 10s than we did. Uh, the uh, Town Hall 11 advantage, though, is pretty difficult to overcome. Props to those guys, though, 112 stars um, uh, to, to uh, our 113. Um, you can see we missed a star on uh, Maverick, number one there, but we were able to then two-star all of their 11s and three-star all but one of their Town Hall 10s. Um, every one of the Town Hall 10 triples was by a Town Hall 11, though uh, there were no 10v10 triples on either side of this war. Um, all right, let's go ahead and let's uh, hop into this and just have a look. Uh, we're going to start, we're going to watch um, an attack by uh, Eris. Where was that? Right here. Um, so you can see he's got to, he's, he's going to be coming with bowlers. He's got three golems in there. Uh, obviously, he's a Town Hall 10. Um, the goal here is to put up two stars. And we'll speed this up just a little bit. A little bit. He's starting to set his funnel here. And... You can see, you can, you can pretty much tell where he's going to come in from. Uh, he's trying to get um, a few extra, uh, a, a little bit of extra uh, percent there, trying to clear out stuff on the sides. Um, in with the bowlers, we've got a jump spell down and a second jump spell down already. The goal is to push straight in there, take out that um, eagle, and take out the town hall as quickly as possible. Once you've got those two things done, uh, then it's about getting percent, and right there he hits the 54%. Um, he winds up actually getting, I believe, almost 70% on this. We'll speed it up just a little bit. It's 67, 68. Uh, might be at 69%, but still. Uh, props to Eris. Very nice attack. Um, and getting two stars on a Town Hall 11, it's, it's no easy task. Uh, let's scroll down. We are going to watch... An attack by uh, Josephus. So Josephus, uh, I thought this was re really interesting. So you can see he's got a couple of witches, some bowlers, and miners. And those miners are going to come in on the back end after he's already set a funnel and he's got everything moving in. Um, it, I just thought it was a really cool approach to taking out a Town Hall 10. Um, oftentimes you just see uh, kind of a spam attack on Town Hall 10s. <laughs> And you don't see any real thought of how am I going to use these bowlers? How am I going to use these witches? So wall breaks in there with the intention of bowlers going in. They did not go in like he had planned. But um, he does set that kind of edge and he's able to get those miners in. Um, miners do a really nice job. Um, you can see they get pulled away from that uh, the Inferno Tower there because CC troops were out and the miners aggroed on those CC troops. Uh, still got miners alive. They're down there on the bottom with the bowlers. And he's just kind of pushing through. Um, you can see at this point, this base is, is pretty well done. There's three point defenses left. Still has a bunch of miners. Still has a bunch of bowlers. Uh, that, that Grand Warden is hanging tough until right there. 
Um, but that is about it. Uh, miners are going to take out those uh, last that last defense there, and that's it. Three stars in the bag. Nice job, Josephus. All right. Um, we're going to push down and look at some of the Town Hall 9s now. Uh, we had one of our lower Town Hall 9s. He was actually a... Uh, he's a this is a Swarm guy, I believe, who came up to war with us for, for the day. Um, and you can see he's coming here with a stoned hobo, but he threw a P.E.K.K.A. in. I thought this was really interesting. Um, so he starts by setting his funnel, golems on each of those uh, mortar tower, mortars, um, using wizards very efficiently to clear out the funnel. And they're both down. Now the funnel is set. It's a beautiful funnel. Um, in comes the king, in comes the P.E.K.K.A., in comes the bowlers. Now unfortunately, these bases that have this kind of inlet are often very nice unless they've got... Uh, high HP buildings right on the corners of that inlet, like this one does. Um, so it tends to pull bowlers away. Fortunately, the queen is able to take out those buildings and pull the bowlers back in, um, but the king won't do the same over on the other side, and he does lose two bowlers to that side. Nonetheless, the other three bowlers are in. That P.E.K.K.A. is in. Um, he's got his heal spell down. Pekka's going to get killed by the queen here actually pretty quickly. Maybe it was maybe it was Skelly's that killed that Pekka. I don't know. Uh, he's been slowly trickling in one or two hogs here or there. Um, now he's going to go in, get that enemy queen, and start bringing the hogs straight across this base. He's got one heal spell left, and he knows that he needs to use it over on those wizard towers. Unfortunately, that king is not making things easy. Down comes the heel. Perfect heel placement. In they go. And that is it. It is going to be tree stars in the bag. These few hogs are going to actually, oh, with the queen, I guess, kill that, that BK. And that is it. It is cleanup time. Nice job, Shubham Mishra. Mishra. I probably butchered that. I'm sorry, bud. Okay. Uh, let's move down. We're going to watch Big D. Um, Big D McSmash had a very, very nice quad Lalo here. Uh, you'll see a lot of times, kind of in the recent meta, people are doing these squared bases, and we saw a lot of these bases in this war, um, and they're throwing those uh, air defenses out here on the edges. This is because they can put this these middle things, make them very, very dangerous, and loons won't travel in there, or they'll travel in there without any without the protection of a hound, and consequently just get smoked inside there. They also tend to have um, uh, Tesla towers that are very close to the inside, and it just eats your eats your loons alive. Um, however, uh, if you have uh, if, if you plan for a couple of things here, first um, you've got to get out. You've got to get one of those air defenses. Get an air defense. Get a queen, and get the um, CC troops. Then, you've got to use one of your spells as a heal. And that heal spell will keep your loons moving through that center when they're normally taking so much damage. So, uh, Big D here uses both a Rage and a Heal and then four Hastes. Um, my preference is, is actually not to have a single Rage, is, is to go with all Hastes. But, it worked out fine for him right here. Uh, you can see, though, those loons up there at 2 o'clock have zero tanking for them. Uh, so he comes in with the heal spell soon. Um, and that heal keeps these two loons alive, pushing through all of this stuff. Uh, then he finishes out the last air defense down here. Um, still has tanking for those loons. And then drops that final rage spell. And it is GG. This base is done. So, tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Big D. We're going to watch a few different kind of quads or even a penta today uh, to, to get a feel of some of the different ways that you can attack some of these bases. Um, a lot of people in Invicta have really been focusing on using the quad and the penta lately. And I had said in my last video 
that um, Captain Sparrow was doing uh, a lot of stuff like that, and uh, a, a new quad type of attack, and I really like the attack that he's got going. Let's move down to 24, and we're going to watch Cheese, because Cheese does uh, S Captain Sparrow's or, or Riggle's quad here, and it's a zap quake. So the, the idea is to get an air defense, and, and preferably... Um, a sweeper. He does not get the sweeper here, unfortunately. If you're going to get a sweeper, you've got to drop those um, zaps right on the edge of that air defense. He doesn't do that there. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, he's able. He's going to be able to get the queen, and he's going to be able to get the CC, and one air defense is already gone. Uh, notice it's basically the same approach that Big D was doing last time, but he was able to get an air defense with his queen. Um, Cheese, uh, unfortunately, can't, couldn't get one with, uh, with his kill squad or with his queen, so he was stuck zap quaking, but it, it works out just fine. Uh, CC is now gone, and queen is now gone. Oh, she will be in one shot. There she goes. Um, queen is able to get a couple of extra buildings here, takes out a whiz tower, takes out an archer tower, and then she's gone. But... Um, very nice loon deployment here, able to get a lot of value while while those hounds are tanking. And <laughs> a, a troll Tesla over there. This was a fresh hit, by the way. Uh, so it was a great plan by Cheese. Um, one hound pops, uh, the other two start heading over, and he's trickling in these uh, loons to follow. Um, Notice that this base wasn't the same as that uh, square base that, we'd, that we've been seeing that's part of the, the kind of current meta. And so Cheese doesn't need to bring a heal spell with him. He knows that he can follow kind of an L-shaped pattern around this base with his loons and then just use haste to keep them on target. And that's exactly what he does here. Could have placed that haste a little bit better. Uh, doesn't matter, though. Um, that hound pops at the perfect time. Uh, lots of pups out there. One defense left. It is gone, and it is tree stars in the bag. This base is GG. One loon in the back in the back pocket, just waiting for cleanup. And that's it. Nice job, cheese. All right, we're gonna watch PAB. PAB has been doing this really cool gobo drag attack. Um, it almost it almost bit him in this one, uh, but you see, um, the the idea is that there are four air defenses here that should be easy to get if you come in, uh, place an appropriate jump spell right around there. Uh, the bowler should knock out this air defense, this air defense, this air defense, and both of these blowers. Uh, then it's just a matter of cleanup around the edges. And he's already starting some of that cleanup with some minions and some uh, baby drag down. Uh, getting his funnel set, he's got a jump down. The second jump is going to be coming in, and you notice he's got four hogs on the back end here. He's thinking once his once his troops get uh, in there deep enough that they can attract attention from uh, this archer tower and this archer tower, that he can pour in hogs on this last air defense because he knew it was going to be too deep for his kill squad to get. And so he's brought four hogs just for that air defense. He's starting to, to do the cleanup process already with baby drags going down all over. Got them a little bit too close. Here comes those hogs. They were just waiting. Uh, hogs take out that air defense, and they're going to take out this archer tower as well. And I think they get this wizard tower too. So these hogs do a pretty nice job. Um, it, it was a lot of value that he got out of those few hogs. Ooh, just barely. Um, now it's just about, uh, almost just about cleanup. Uh, baby drags are out there. You notice he's got quite a few. One, two, three, four. Had five. One just died off. They're sitting over here now. Oh no, he's got five. He had six and one just died off. Um, unfortunately, three of them are not enraged. Uh, and now only one of them is enraged. Uh, and pretty soon none of them will be. They're going to move over here at a point where being enraged is pretty important. Takes a black bomb there. They do wind up getting this. And we'll slow this down just so you can see. Uh, this one baby dragon is barely going to finish off this base with just a splinter of health left. And you'll see, th it was fortunate that the archer tower kind of switched targets there, because this, she does kill this baby drag, and then when they switch targets to the next one, just a sliver of health. But, 
pulls that out, gets the tree. Nice job, PAB. Nice job, Scott. Um, 27. I got to show 27 because I failed on this base. I did a queen walk all the way down this edge, um, and then I tried dragons, and man, I just am sick of, of using dragons, I'll be honest. I love to watch drag attacks, but I cannot seem to pull them off. Uh, Iggy does a very, very nice queen walk here, though. He knew the timing, since I had done this queen walk all the way from this air defense to this air defense. He knew what he was going to get. He knows that there are um, uh, hidden Teslas right along this wall here. And so he starts bringing his queen in, has already had to pop her ability, unfortunately. However, he saw that when I did it, I only needed to use one rage and the queen ability, and I was able to take care of everything. So uh, he's got his one rage and one queen ability and a ton of hogs. And by a ton of hogs, I mean he's got 33 hogs, uh, 27 that he brought, and a CC full of hogs. Uh, rage is going to come down on the queen here in just a second. There we go. She'll take out this king. Um, then he will bring his king down to take out the enemy queen. And as soon as that happens, the hogs come in. So his king is down. Uh, skelly spell goes down on the enemy queen. Unfortunately, all of the skellies are sitting on the wrong side of that wall. And then it's just a wall of hogs that come pouring in. And he's got three heal spells for all of these hogs. Um, and it is just GG. These hogs just rip through this base. Uh, could have been a little bit better on that uh, first heal placement so that the hog stayed in that heal, but doesn't matter. Uh, third heal comes down right now. Yep. And that is it. Queen is up. Uh, lots of hogs left. He's, I mean, he's probably got 15 or 20 hogs left there. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Iggy, and thanks for cleaning up my mess. Okay. Moving right along, Riggle. Riggle did a penta. So um, when we FC, he's been doing a lot of quads, uh, and then he decided he would go with a penta here. Uh, works out nicely for him. Riggle has really gotten quite good with uh, air attacks, um, especially this penta and quad attacks. Uh, the goal, take out the CC, take out the enemy queen, and if you're going to do a penta, you don't even need to worry about getting another air defense. So, notice he didn't have a whole lot of loons here, though. Now, unfortunately, he has a hound that takes off towards that other uh, air defense. So, basically, a <laughs> swag hound, um, unfortunately. He's still got two hounds up, one hound up now, and it is tree stars in the bag. Uses the heel over the Tesla farm, and he is good to go. Very nice job, Riggles. Or Captain Sparrow, if you know him by that. All right. Let's move on to Monkey. So I think Monkey is actually also a, a swarm guy who came up um, to war with us. I don't know. I haven't been keeping a very close track, but this is a very interesting attack. So if you look, he's got four witches, um, a couple of golems, six healers, uh, one baby dragon. So this is a, this is a mostly witch attack. Um, Going to take out an air defense right here, and there's all of the air defenses clumped up in this area. Uh, winds up getting the CC. And... Then he's going to get some value with this queen, but starts a witch walk, which I don't think I've seen before. Now, they kind of split up. Three of them stay together, at least initially here, um, and then one of them trails off again. Uh, the nice thing is with the buff to witches, they can actually take a mortar hit now, and they're just fine. Um, so in he comes with bowlers and his golems. Uh, wall, break, wall broke through two different walls. Um, Kind of a kind of a waste of, of two healers there that are stuck on a single witch, but they do wind up catching up with all of these bowlers, and at that point, um, it really just becomes uh, a GG uh, situation. 
So um, <laughs> there's a random wall breaker out there. Lots of skellies going. So he's down to just the archer towers. Finishes off those archer towers. And it is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, monkey. All right. So that is it. Um, great job to the Invicta guys. Uh, and great job to Swarm Synergy. Um, you guys gave us a run for our money. It was a lot of fun. Uh, best of luck to you guys in the future. Um, this is Dr. D from One Hive Invicta. Clash on.